Hello, YouTube. It's been a while. We're back with the newly minted national champion. What's up, Bryce? How's it going? I uh, got back from Worlds. I'm experiencing lots of jet lag, so a regular job has been hard, but Worlds was fun. I wish I did better, but it was a great experience regardless. Yes, sir. In fact, Bryce is so jet lagged it affected me because this is our second time recording this video. There <laughs> technical issues. Oof. Yeah, technical difficulties. Uh, it was contagious. But uh, okay, we're going to redo it. We we have our tier list. We practiced a lot of post list BT15 to get Bryce ready for Worlds. And I think we have a pretty good grasp on the meta. So we'll get right into it and talk about what we found to be the best deck, which is, of course, Love You Mon X. Yeah, this is the deck I brought. It's a, I brought a weird version that played Anubis, but this deck, regardless of how you build it, there's multiple paths to build the deck. It's insane. It, it natural by its natural engine floodgates certain decks out of the meta, or at least puts them tier two. It enforces you to play tech cards. The it does a lot of damage. It's very consistent because all of its engine is just draw, draw, draw. It yeah. gets to play. It, it itself is the best floodgate, but also purple floodgates. If you need to play them, are the best floodgates. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the deck's overall really good. You uh, the two paths the deck really has is you go for a more like consistent plan that has bigger OTK potential in the uh, Cerberus Mon X package, mm -hmm. or you go for a more um, Biting Crush focused thing with Waru Cedramon and Dragomon package. But both are really strong. It just one's more explosive and one is more like consistent. Yes, and the most annoying part of this deck for me is that the Leviamons are so big for no reason. 13k, two checks, 14k, three checks. Like sometimes they just beat you down. Uh, like you can, you can't even like play against that sometimes. They you just boom, 14 three checks. Oh, damn, I lost. Uh, like it doesn't matter sometimes. Yeah, nothing short of like uh, options or level sevens really stop them their security checks because they're so massive. Yeah, and they can force you to play by effects, so you can't even like play around that sometimes. So it gets weird going against this deck. I think it's kind of cringe, but luckily it kind of falls off next set, so don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah, it's not overpowered. It's just the best deck right now. Like if mm -hmm. we had the other decks that like were limited, they'd clearly be better than this deck. But yes. It's it's fine as is right now. It's just we have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. All right, and we're just gonna go straight through tier tier one, and we'll talk about. I guess let's just talk about the deck that won world. So we'll talk about security control. Um, I think this deck is in a good spot. It can beat pretty much every deck depending on your techs, but people hate playing against it or upset that it won. I don't know. What do you think, Bryce? Some people also hate playing it. I know some of us really don't mind. It's just another deck, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. This deck, that. though, the biggest issue with it, I think, for a lot of the player base, is that it forces you to play different or build your deck different. Mm -hmm. Your deck has to actually have natural answers to it, or you have to play the game completely differently. It's very beatable by almost any deck. You just have to play a completely different style of game than you're used to, and like not many people want to prepare for that because the matchup is such a long slog. Like It takes a while for any... Like, one individual game is, like, a lot, like, you'd play, like, five matches of another game almost. Yeah. It just takes a long time to play, and some people don't like going long types of games. Mm -hmm. I agree, and I think the decks that tend to beat security control are just not very good right now, so stuff that's loaded to the ground, like hybrids, cross, um, what else, blue flares... I guess, uninteractive OTKs, uh, but they have to be uninteractive. Yeah, so stuff like that. Decks that play ADP, I mean, I guess you can rare, but we'll get there. But I just think security control overall is in a good spot. Um, it just really is a matter of do you have, like, the internal fortitude to play it at a regional to, like, be that guy. Every That's, time you play this deck, you're going to time almost every single round, yeah. so it's very mentally taxing. Yeah. I don't know, but the deck is clearly good. Um, I don't think there's anything that will ever take this deck away from being competitive, aside from like the meta being weird or Bandai has to change how options come out of security. Yeah, the meta can be weird for this deck. Like it goes in and out. Like it's not. It wasn't good in hybrid meta. Mm -hmm. It wasn't good in cross meta. I don't know if it's going to be necessarily good in Magnamon X meta when that card comes into the fray, where it's just immune True. to everything. Unaffected. But it's like it goes in and out. It's it's always going to be a force in our game just because of the way the mechanics work. I agree. And uh, speaking of decks that have potential counters, talk about Red Hybrid with the uh, Altamon Heritable. Security effects don't activate. But uh, yeah, this is like the one of two really good aggro decks in this meta. Deck has not changed at all. 
like literally no changes from last format and nationals format. It's still just a good solid pick that sometimes just wins. Yeah, it's very strong. It got lost nothing. Other decks, like the power level of this format went down after the Nationals format because you don't have to deal with Anubis. And this deck was already really strong, so it just kind of rose up and st still a really strong deck. Yeah, so we're, we're not going to touch too much on this one because it's the exact same deck. It's still really good. So we'll move on to the newest aggro deck. This deck, if it gets rolling, is crazy. Numemon X. Yeah, this is the Numemon Monzimon deck. The biggest, this deck, I kind of think of it like kind of like old school uh, Eismon uh, purple deck where you need to see your key card. In this case, it's Numemon X. But once you do, your deck is insane. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where so the, much floating school... recursion. Like, Yeah, it, it, it can float from level four to level six for free, which means it has really fast access to like level fives and like level sevens mm -hmm. that other decks like don't even can keep up with as long as they see their piece. Yes. And, and this and Red Hybrid are like the two best Ukomon decks. Like Ukomon's a crazy card that we kind of got earlier than Japan did. Mm -hmm. And so it's this is one of the best decks at abusing it. Yes. Yeah, so there's a couple different things you can do in your bottom. I've seen red. I've seen purple. I've seen black, black. right? The black Sunomon. Is the black is the most common with the Sunomon that lets you draw when you Digimon another Digimon. And like the other two colors, you just play the draw eggs. So uh, it really depends on what flavor you want to go to. But the basic strategy remains the same. You just uh, try to float Numa X into plant Numa and then go from there. And then you have Monze and Monze X to beat down and control board. So it's a very cool aggro deck. Sometimes you just lose to this deck on like turn two or turn three because they just spam the board with like four guys. Oh. Yeah, Monza X lets you play a guy for free, and as and then minus DP because of it, which gives it like some good control options. Even though it's an aggro deck, mm -hmm. it's an aggro deck that gets to abuse Venus Mon and uh, Shine Grimon Rune Mode, mm -hmm. which is very uncommon for an aggro deck. Like those are normally control tools. Yes. So the fact that an aggro deck gets to use them is like makes it pushes it over the top when it works. Moving on, so that's everything we have in Tier One. Uh, let's move on to tier 1.5. These are decks that are very strong. They're stronger than the rest of the tier 2 field, which is almost every deck now is tier 2. Like There's so many solid decks you can pick. But these decks are just a little bit above them, but just not quite as good as the top 4. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with Mirage. Um, this deck, once again, lost nothing from Nat's format. Um, I guess the Bukamon, Bukamon hit came, right? So they lost the Bukamon, they lost their jamming. But... Uh, the niche of this deck now is that it's probably the best bounce deck, right? Yeah, there's certain things that are very vulnerable to bounce. Like, every time you play a purple deck, purple is generally vulnerable to bounce. The best deck is the purple deck. Uh, the Numemon deck is incredibly vulnerable to bounce because it means they get the proc none of their floating, and, like, it just resets them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the be best blue deck you're playing Zudomon because it doesn't really need, like, a lot of level 5, like, in-engine cards. So you can play an out-of-engine card that's really strong. Yes. Uh, other than that, I think besides the Bukamon, the deck has stayed the same, right? You still have four trainings. You still have four trainings, boost, boost tamers. Yeah. I think it got a new egg that also gives jamming, but it doesn't necessarily need it all the time. It's just yeah, it's it, a level it three less, Madoki Betamon. Yeah, yeah, it means they get less checks in during the, the like off their rookies, so they get uh, a little bit less chip damage early on. Yeah, but it still can do a lot. And even though if it doesn't OTK, it still has really good like floodgate potential because their boss monster floodgates people from drawing cards, which is really obnoxious for most decks to deal with. Yeah, so I think Mirage players just need to change their focus a little bit more from just Unga Boonga OTK to I'm going to bounce your board and stop you from adding cards to your hand. And then when the opportunity presents itself, I can go for game with multiple swings. So maybe just slow, slow the tempo of your deck down a little bit. And I think you get there with this deck. So yeah, I would say three Zudomon's probably mandatory just because you want the extra bounce of ability and going into Zudomon followed by going into your Mirage is really strong, especially when you have mm -hmm. like memory boosts and stuff. I was playing in Worlds, and some guy playing Mirage broke my board of, like, Anubis, Merva, and, like, three other Digimon. And it was completely empty after, like, from Rookie. Dang. All right. Well, there's a hot tip from the champ. There we go. Play yeah, the deck's good. The deck is still good. All right. Uh, Mirage, and then we'll move on to... This is Yellow Vaccine. There's a lot of different ways to play this deck. A lot of different builds. Uh, we'll say this is like a generic good stuff yellow vaccine. So you got your Patamons, you got Gatomons, you got TK, Aces, Anjumon, Anjumon, Metamamon, Venusmon. Uh, there's like so many things. But in general, 
I think this deck has so many tools and options that if you find your right build for the meta, you're a very good deck. Yeah. This deck is very strong, has very good answers to everything. Its biggest issue is still not fixed. It doesn't, like, have a win con, really. It takes it, it's, like, really hard for it to close games out. Yeah. But it's still, like, really powerful. It's... Um, I will say it is terrible against set con because it doesn't have a win con. It takes, no. but against almost anything else, you could probably find a way to win in any matchup. It's it's a really good deck. Once it gets its the new support next set, it actually does get a win condition. It becomes insane. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's pretty much all. We'll, we'll move on because yellow vaccine. There's just too much to talk about with this deck. So yeah, we'll talk about the other uh, vaccine deck. I think. There's like... Yeah, there's like two. There's like two like subcategories we'll talk about for vaccine. But in general, yellow vaccine, good cards is tier 1.5. So let's talk about uh, Fenrir. This is a really strong OTK deck right now. Uh, it got access to red purple cards. So now you can play ADP, which takes away kind of one of the bigger weaknesses of the deck, which is uh, dying to security bombs. But now that's not necessarily a problem. What do you think, Bryce, about Fenrir Lugamon? I think this deck's really strong. It actually has game versus basically any deck. Its biggest issue is that it's bad versus the best deck in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, like it could, I think it actually has pretty favored matchups across the board, but being bad to the best deck means you're going to see that, which means you have to tech your deck for it or you're just going to lose. Like This deck can't beat that deck if it's not teched for it. Yeah. Uh, but I think Fenrir has that... that they abuse Memboost in training, so sometimes your gameplay against Fenrir is they go training pass, Memboost pass, training pass, Memboost pass, and then the first time they raise is they turn they kill you. It's very BT9 esque. So yeah. it's yeah. it's very much a salt. And if it's not OTKing, it has the new uh, red stack allows you to go into your uh, Hell Lugermon, remove something, but then also choke to one, and then reset your turn with analog use so you can start building immediately when yeah. normally it was a little harder to do that because it's harder to it wasn't as easy to put them to one without the new inheritables yeah it's very obnoxious when they get their right pieces in the right order yeah, but they have more pieces so it's more consistent now yeah uh biggest weaknesses this deck uh death x pomumon crimson blaze this deck has weaknesses for sure, so that's kind of the reason why it's not. I would say it's less vulnerable not... to Death X. Yeah, I would that's... say it's less vulnerable to Death X than other go wide decks, uh -huh. only because when it goes wide, it's killing you. That's true. That's true. If if they... the other floodgates do suck though. Yeah, for sure. Pomu and Crimson Blaze, this deck just can't play against. They have to like waste a Hell Luger to kill Pomu, and that buys you a turn. So yeah, it has weaknesses. That's why it's not uh, like a strong tier one, but. It's still very, very good. We will move on to a deck I don't want to put 1.5, but I will because everyone tells me. Bloom Lord. Bloom Lord. Got one new card, which actually I think justifies tier 1.5, the Quantum Mon. Quantum Mon solves a lot of this deck's problems, and um, I think the deck is actually now very good. Yeah, Quantum Mon's a crazy card. Yeah. Not much to say. It's I don't think it got any support in 15. It's just using... Uh, BT14 and below cards plus Quantumon, but Quantumon's crazy. Yeah, Quantumon technically in 15. Technically, you, you buy a box of 15 yeah. Quantumons in there, but yeah. You, put, you get like what? Two or three in the deck? And you uh, and uh, Palmon, Palmon X. Palmon X, you definitely play Palmon yeah. X. Oh, yeah, Palmon X came out this time. Yes, Palmon yeah, X is a big one because it lets you kill Floodgates. And it has an inheritable, so you can cut like the bad Pomumon that like, you needed before. Yes, so you don't play the suspend Pomumon. And now you just play Palmon X, and you can play the old BT14 Palmon 2. So you just keep that one in the raising. You bring it out, put Palmon X over, suspend one of their guys. They lose two memory, and then you uh, torque on them from there. Or like you can just use the Palmon X to clear their floodgate, and then again pop off from there. So it's a it's a very good deck now. A lot of its weaknesses have been covered up. You get four trainings, Mimi instead of Membu, HPD, Quantumon. Quartzmon, all the good stuff. Yeah, Quartzmon Turbo deck. Yeah. But also you have Quantmon now, and Quantumon is just a really, really good card. It still has most of the same weaknesses. It's just it has an answer, a better answers to those weaknesses than it had before. Yes, yes. And let's talk about our last one point five deck, which I'm a, I'm a believer, but I can see this deck 
being maybe just high tier two, let's talk about Devas. Because I think Deva has a pretty cool niche in the meta where they don't play level threes or fours, which means that Leviamon can't force you to play by effects because that's what Drago and Waru Seedramon do. So you can turn those off. And then Fenrir himself is just minus 16,000 of the whole board. Yeah. So you can Feng kill Numamon. Yeah, Feng Long, Feng Long. So you can, you can kill Numamon through all their floats. Um, I think this deck has a strong niche. It's just a matter of can you build the deck right and can you live long enough to play Feng Long? Yeah, this is like the ultimate control deck that's not Setcon. It's bad versus Setcon because even though the game will go absolutely forever. Yes, but... it's a cringe matchup where Setcon always wins, but game one will take you 45 minutes. Yeah, it's super cringe. But if, as long, if this deck goes long enough, like you, if you they set up enough Feng Longs, like you literally can't beat it. It's just unkillable. It keeps getting rid of everything. It uh, the deck makes it frustrating to attack. So if you need, you need to attack to proc a lot of your effects, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, it's one of those weird decks that you just have to practice and learn how to play against. And sometimes even then, like you don't have a way to play against them. Like Fenrir is immune to Digimon effects, so if you're not playing big removal options, you're not getting rid of Fenrir or fucking <sighs> Fang Long, Fang Long. God. So yeah, big dragon guy. Uh, yeah, it's really weird deck sometimes in that it just checks your deck building that way it does have the big the biggest weakness is that it always has to give like a lot of memories but especially early on mm -hmm. but as soon as they like get through enough rotations and they just start slamming thing longs constantly the deck becomes really hard to deal with but you have an early opening as they give you like seven memory every turn for the first couple turns of the game that's true it gives you a little bit of chance to catch up but sometimes just dealing with two level fives every turn is hard in and of itself uh okay we'll move on so that's all of our tier 1.5 like i said these decks are all really good they're not quite as good as the top four but they're a little bit better than the rest of the decks which is pretty much everything else I, every single deck here is playable except for maybe a couple that we threw in just for memes so uh, we'll just go down the list beelzemon uh is the same deck it's always been it hasn't gained anything hasn't lost anything it's just the casino deck Sometimes you just mill your way to victory. Sometimes you high roll. You're you almost have like an interactive game plan. Uh, it is significantly worse because you only have one of your best mill options, which is the old Itmon that got limited. It like that de limiting that severely like slowed this deck down. But when it does hit, this deck hits really hard. Yeah, Beelzemon X still a really weird card. <laughs> still, it's still a weird card. Um, but yeah, other than that, this deck. It's just sometimes just doesn't get there anymore. Sometimes you lost a lot of your mill power, which means you're just too slow in a lot of situations. So we'll move it's on. Still good. Yeah, it's still it's, good. Sometimes it's high seven, roll. But... Also, you can't really floodgate it because they just kill your floodgate when they mill. That's true. That's true. Imon from the start deck is good. Uh, let's talk. So okay, so this is this is yellow rapid mon vaccine okay but you're running four cody's people keep telling me this deck is not real i swear to god this deck is real so you play 12 patamons you play the movie patamon the good patamon from bt14 the and then just pick your four other patamons probably the old one that like you gain memory when you minus cp something you play your eight rapids four cody's four tk's two starter or old bt1 tk and then you fill out the rest of your deck with good vaccine cards and you just start controlling board with rabbit mon i swear this deck is good but no one believes me i think this deck is good on the basis of just being a good vaccine deck and patamon gets to hit both rapid mons and patamon's a crazy card and hitting really high value targets with patamon is powerful yeah uh, this can be argued to be the same like tier as a vac as a regular vaccine, but I know that there's a, a niche that you get to play like more of the uh, the pure like rapid mon support on top of being a vaccine deck. Yeah, so you can you can throw in a cheeky Mega Gargo in this one, cheeky, because the movie Patamon searches Mega Gargo out of your security, two color black card. So good to know, it's cheeky. Uh, anyways, this is, this deck is it's kind of a meme, but it's also good. So we'll, we'll, I think it's tier two. I'll, I'll fight for that. I'll stand on business That's, on that one. I will say, like, even if it's this deck, like that version of the deck is tier two, you can still play the Rapid Mons in just a vaccine deck. Yeah, of course. They're still good level four vaccine cards. So you definitely probably at least play the new one. 
Uh, moving on, speaking of bunnies, this is going to be bunny tribal. So essentially two double typhoon decks smashed together. Uh, you're not doing the alliance stuff. You're focusing mainly on terriers and rapids. I think this deck is very solid. Uh, you can win against pretty much anything because of how powerful like the interaction is between just beating people down with rapids and always threatening Gargo Ace to counter. Very consistent deck because of four double typhoons. Uh, you only have to play four level fives, which gives you a lot of room for tech everywhere else. Giant Missile is a crazy option card. Um, I think this deck is very, very solid. Is it tier 1.5? Tier 1? No. But like I said, you can win against everything. So I think this deck is definitely worth the consideration. Also one of the best budget decks because you just build two buy two advanced decks and you have a full functioning, powerful deck. True. Basically. You're yeah. missing like maybe like a couple of the rapid mons. You're missing uh, one or two BTA rapid mon because the deck only comes with one each. So you get two. So yeah, you're playing like three or four. Mm -hmm. then... Yeah, but everything else is in there. Um, my one comment about this deck for if you're trying to build this is don't don't mess with the alliance stuff except for the new lot mon that's the alliance stuff is like its own separate deck that you can build out and it's actually not that bad uh but you don't run a lot of the cards that you would in like a terrier mon tribal deck so just stick to your terrier mons and your rapid mons and you'll be good um uh, moving on to another strong mid-rangey green deck heavy leomon leomon this deck is very good especially if you don't know what it does fortitude is a crazy keyword heavy leo is an insane boss uh bot deck stuff d digivolve is swing twice it's a good deck yeah it just does a lot it's like a mid-rangey beat down it doesn't really like kill you fast but it just kills you with consistent hits over and over again that are with bodies that are really annoying to deal with like another deck that just floats a lot yeah it's the biggest issues of this deck are it can be a little inconsistent because you don't have like the best level four lineup. You only could like you could play like max like eight good level fours plus yeah. two others. Yeah. And it has to play cards by effects, which is really bad versus the best deck in the game. That's true. So other than that, the deck's really solid. Uh, oh, and it's weak to bounce also. So it's like Mariah Also weak to bounce, yes, yes, because you cannot proc fortitude when you get bounced. Alright. Uh this one. Edamon, not tier two. It it's like top of tier four fun, bottom of tier three. This deck is so close to being actually good, especially because it has a it has a big what does your deck do factor. And a lot of people do not know what this deck does. Um, my strategy against this deck is just never attack them because they want you to attack them. So as long as you don't attack them, they can't win the game. <laughs> it's just really weird. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. So just stop attacking them and then just, you'll eventually find a way to clear their board and win out. It's a very strange slow deck. Just a knowledge check of a deck. It's funny and it it's a, it's like almost competitive enough where you could bring it to locals and have, have a good time and sometimes beat people up. Yeah. Yeah. This deck thing is like one card that's broken to come out for it and it'll be very playable. But as of now it just no win con. No one con too slow. Gimmick is kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, Leopard X. This is like pure Leopard X. So Leopard Mon, Leopard X. Like uh, you could do bunnies with this. A bunch of different bottom ends. You can do Rosemon bottom end. I've seen that. Um, I think it's okay. Again, biggest weakness of this deck is that it has to play by effects. So. And it's like worse bloom. It is worse bloom. It has a little bit more, a little bit more board control. It's a little more defensive than Bloom because the Leopard Mons give you blocker and let you return cards to hand. But um, yeah, it's just not quite there in my opinion. I th yeah, I think some of the stuff that's nice is like the green ramp tools that you get to level six fast. But mm. gr uh, Bloom kind of ramps while also playing more guys out, so it does b both the things at once. Whereas yeah. this only does the one thing until it gets to its boss. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, we'll move on to Machine Dramon. Uh, got a lot of new tools to set. You got the Marvin. You got um, the new D Digivolve. 
what is it? It's an Air Dramon and a Mega Dramon, something like that. I think so. Yeah, so there's a level four and a new level four and a new level five. Uh, you can play the Rapid Mon from the starter deck. Um, the Supreme Connection option, obviously, the the new delay option for machines. It's a good searcher for the deck and also lets them reduce play costs, which not a lot of people are playing Psychmon right now, so that's pretty good. Yes, so I think the, the biggest thing this deck got, I mean, I think is just a lot more access to DDG Evolve effects. DDG Evolve is very good right now. Yeah. DDG Evolve the, and the Tamer are yeah. both really strong, because the Tamer lets you proc your Inheritable. Um, you play mm -hmm. like the, the Alphamon Dorumon card engine, yeah. like Ottoman. Yes. It lets you just proc that for free like every turn. Yeah, it's really good. It really speeds up your deck a lot. Uh, problems with the deck, the same problems machine has always had. Sometimes you just get the really clunky hands. You don't get to your machine. They're playing a card that outs your machine. So like Angemon, Chaos Degrade, Lonky. Leviamon. Uh, Leviamon. Leviamon hits it twice. You need you need Hover SP out, basically. You need Hover SP and you need your stack in order to stop Leviamon from killing your stack. Um, Quantumon also outs you. So, it has a lot of weird outs. It got faster, but it's also still too slow just by a bit sometimes. Yeah, and it has a lot of weaknesses that are currently meta. Moving on to Metal Guru Um This deck has not been good since they hit the Where Guru Mon promo. In fact, it hasn't been good since Greymon was good because there's just a lot of cards now that blocker that you can't get rid of with this deck um they did i got some new support so you got a new mat that searches gabu zenguru is huge the new gabu gives you blocker and the new metal guru lets you warp and stuns three guys and has evade biggest change for me with this deck i've been i've been messing with this deck a lot is that you lost a lot of otk potential so now you're kind of trying to play like stun their guys with the level six metal guru mon and then try to double swing like twice and then win that way um it's a lot slower you have to pray a little bit more to get there and sometimes you don't otk and they just beat you on the next turn which is really sad yeah but what I, my experience with this deck is that it does feel strong but when it doesn't otk you it kind and you like if you like answer that one stack they bring out it's like really hard for them to recover so like you almost win off of clearing the first stack they bring out yeah, it's really unfortunate. Like losing the Where Guru on promo hurt the deck a lot because the other level five Where Gurus are just they're just okay. Like uh Where Guru Ace is surprisingly good, but not for what this deck is trying to do. Like pure like multi swing Guru Mon, like Metal Guru Mon or Where Guru Mon Ace is not good for this version of the deck. So overall, I think if you want to play a blue dog deck mirage is the way to go unfortunately yeah, mirage was just better than gurumon right now the deck it doesn't need to be good this deck was like one of those cancer decks when it was the best deck so yeah i agree uh moving on to digipolice or yumon um i think this deck is a meme but you know i'm just i'm gonna stand on it this deck is a meme. <laughs> like it, it doesn't do anything. Like I don't know. It blocks and gets to play Commandermon, and that's about it. And then yeah. oh, it played the cards by defects, so Levimon crushes it. True, true. Uh, yeah, this deck has too many weaknesses, and the payoff is not worth it, in my opinion. The restand stuff with the Oryumon line is weird, and the Ryudomon costs one unless you're paid, unless you're playing like the shitty egg. I don't like this deck. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to say. I don't like this it, deck. It's like if you want to play that stuff, just play like regular Command Dramon. Yeah. If if you like this deck, you can you can actually me in the comments. So we'll 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 fight in the comments. Uh Rosemon X. I think this deck is surprisingly good. Like it it can stun you out multiple turns in a row. The problem with Rosemon which has always been the problem with Rosemon is that it is worse Bloom Lord. But it has yeah, a it, it has a different niche now. It has a different niche now with the stuns, but it, it's still it, not It stuns and it kind of ramps even faster because of the new uh Rose X. Lilymon X. Oh, Lily X, Lily X, yeah. The Lily X like lets you draw cards and gain extra memory for evolving. Mm -hmm. Like so if you like you can, like proto form into it for two, but then it gains one, so your level five costs one memory, which is really strong. Yeah. 
Uh, not even counting all of your inheritables, which might make it cheaper. So, like, it ramps faster, so it could be, like, even more of a Quartz Turbo deck w with a lot of stun. Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't, like, get as much payoff as Blue, which also goes wide while doing that. Yeah. And also, uh, Rosemond Burst is just okay. It's just okay. It's, it's, it's worse, uh, Quartz. Yeah. You could play, like, one of it if you really want, just to have an in-archetype searcher. Uh -huh. But... Quartz is still probably just better. Yeah, Rose, Rose Burst has its angles where it comes up for sure, but I'd say like yeah, like ninety percent of the time, Quartz Mon is just a better card. So um, yeah, Rose Mon, it's good. It's eh, if you're a Rose Mon player, hey, then it, it's fine. It's better than hey, it's in tier two. It's a playable com deck you can bring to and do decent in a competitive environment. Yes. Okay, we'll move on to okay. So this is another yellow vaccine deck, and. Uh to differentiate, no, 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 no. I, I put I put Gatamon in here. I put Massimon in here. Uh, oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so th this is for the straight up Kari and Jewelmon Yellow Vaccine deck. So, like, just raw Kari and Jewelmon Revelation of Light, you, Matamamon. Like, you just trash your security and go fast at them. Um. It's a different way to play Yellow Vaccine. Is it better? I I don't know. I don't know. But it's still a Yellow Vaccine deck. So if you're if you want to be that guy and just play hard Kari Yellow Vaccine, I, I would say the reason we distinguish that these other Yellow Vaccine decks are tier two and one of them is above all of them. I think the best version of Vaccine is just a combination of all of them, as opposed to just locking yourself into like one of the like versions of it. Ooh. That's a tough one for me. Sometimes it's so hard with this deck because there's so many ways to build it. Because yeah, you can go full aggro face with the uh, Kari stuff or Metamamons. You can even play Contorismon stuff in there because they also have a similar niche where like they trash themselves. Um, and then there's like the full other direction where you go Patamon, Magna, Angemon, just recover Seraphimon, be big. That version of the deck has no win condition though. So it's And then when you combine them, they kind of go against each other because it's like Patamon wants to recover a lot so you can abuse emissaries. Gatamon wants to trash things from your security, so then you lose emissary targets. Uh, the Rapidmon engine the, also is not Rapidmon is in the mix there. Like I I don't know. It I I mean, like we said, we went three yellow vaccine decks, but said one is tier 1.5. So I think there is yeah. a version that is better than the rest. And it's mostly just some weird combination of like all of them. Yeah, I think what we're trying to say is that as a concept, yellow vaccine is tier 1.5. But then when you start getting to the minutiae of like the different ways you could build a deck, like it gets... Yeah. Ugh. Uh, we'll move on because that one, Next like time. I said, we, we can make a whole like two hour video on just yellow vaccine, but we won't do that. If you like deck building, Vaccine's a great uh, deck to play. Yeah. We'll, we'll go on to... This is just regular Commandramon. So no no Oryumon, although maybe that is just the way to play the deck now. But we're going back to just like rookie face beatdown Commandramon with this one. I don't think this deck is better than Numamon or Red Hybrid. In fact, I think it's significantly worse than pretty much any other deck you could play. Yeah, and you want to play so many Commander Mons, your deck gets a little, like, too low to the ground if you want to play Ukumon on top of that. Yeah. And you do have, like, a decent, like, level 6 line now with the uh, Brigade mm -hmm. But it's still, like, it's just not quite as good as other decks. It doesn't do anything unfair enough. Yes. The most unfair thing is that sometimes it's hard to remove Brigade Dramon and it just starts getting a ton of value. But, like, they have to get to that and then let it stick around for, like, two turns or three turns without getting rid of it. Yep. All right. Belfamon. Um What do you think, Bryce? Um, is, is this tier two? It's like tier two. It's like worse Leviamon, but like it's more bricky, but it gets to play almost all of the same cards because uh all of the Belfamon stuff are seven great demon lords, so you can use it with uh Biting Crush mm -hmm. and then set up a situation where you have your Belfamon, you can't interact with it. If you play stuff by effects, you biting crush, and then the regular Belfamon wipes the board. So like yeah. It's good. It's just a little bit slower and a little bit less consistent than just pure Leviamon. Mm -hmm. But because it just has like crazy board wipes followed by like a, almost an OTK, it's still solid. Yeah. I'm okay about this deck. I think it's fine. Yeah, I think it's probably just like it's like... It didn't get like new cards. It just plays like the old... Le it's like a uh, just the old Leviamon with mm -hmm. like all the old support for Belfamon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, Shine Gray. Uh, I still think this deck is very good, but it has the problem where it gets dunked on by Levimon, like really bad. We were testing. I was kind of worried about this deck at first, and then I realized, oh, the only way to get to the board fast in any capacity is they have to play all their tamers by effects. They don't just the uh, they can't just hard play all their tamers because then you're playing four or five for all your tamers. Mm -hmm. But when you play a tamer by effect, it procs Levimon's condition, which is play a Digimon or a tamer by an effect. Yep. On top of that, there's this weird ruling where if you hit a tamer in security, that also procs Levimon X. Yes. And this deck always just puts its tamers back in security, so you just get free Levimon procs off of it. Yeah. So, huh. they, so they just lose their stat constantly and also are losing tamers constantly. Yeah. So, uh, this deck, if you're not playing against Levy X, you can still high roll. Like, you can still hit Marcus Marcus, yeah. like, shine burst mode, and boom, your security's gone yeah. later. It, yeah. Definitely can just uninteractive OTK you really powerfully. I just think the other deck that does that, which I think is like Mirage it's just, or Fenrir, are just a little bit better than this deck is. Mm -hmm. Blue Flare. Poo Flare. Poo Flare. Um, technically got support. Supreme Connection, you can technically play it in this deck because Metal Greymon is a machine. It's a cyborg. I think like all of the cards for the blue flare are like cyborgs. No, it's just, it's it's only the metal greymon and the deckermon. So it's not the mailbird also. Uh oh, mailbird might be a cyborg. That's probably true. Yeah, I think yeah, I think greymon the regular level four greymon is not, but yes, metal greymon and a couple of the level fours are. So you could do that, reduce the play cost of the metal greymon. It's not bad. It's okay and. Blue Flare always has that thing where like it shit stomps some matchups and then is absolutely useless against others. And yeah. right now, I think the best decks don't really care about Blue Flare that much. So I would say Numon would care if it didn't also spam Floodgates while doing it. That's true. That's true. Like Numon gets to play Cyclone type Floodgates for free, and this thing literally doesn't play out; it only stuns things, so it can't mm -hmm. like remove them. That's true. So you see. So they see it once, and they're just kind of stuck. That's true. Monza X plays any level 3, right? It plays any Numamon or level 3. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Actually disgusting card. Disgusting. All right. Well, Poo Flare, we'll, we'll move on to Greymon. So much like Yellow Vaccine, we lumped all the Greymons together for this one. But unlike Yellow Vaccine, I think these decks are all just kind of the same power level. And I think we can agree. Haters will say otherwise, but this is tier 2. It is a playable, decent deck that is not currently the best deck. Yeah. Don't listen to your local Greymon player who says that Greymon X is come back. Don't listen to him. That card's limited back. for a reason. That card's limited for a reason. Okay, so I actually want to go on a little bit of a rant. So people think, oh, but Greymon, need, that can come back. The reason that card is so much better in a Greymon deck is that Greymon's tools are all of the tools in the game. Whereas some decks are just really good at their thing. Greymon does a little bit of everything, so when you get to do a little bit of everything faster, it makes the deck crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree, and you know what? I'll, I'll make a deal with you, Greymon players. Okay, Greymon X can come back if Gururumon X comes back. We'll handshake on that one. Yeah, yeah. But that one hurt my, my soul a little bit. Uh, I can't see. I don't want to see either of those cards coming back. How about that one? Um, but yeah, I think this deck. Uh, I think Proto Farm is actually a big card for this deck. I think people don't. Are kind of sleeping on the proto form with the Greymon engine because you can reduce the cost of your evolutions. Uh, if your stack dies, you can recycle your Greymon X back to your hand. There you go. There's your second Greymon X. You can get it back with proto form. How about that? So, I think a lot of yeah. players are used to the uh, interaction that they used to do a lot of times where they would swing and then Evo while swinging with the uh -huh. old X antibody. But I think proto form is just really strong and they should. I think it's wor worth testing out a little bit more. I agree. Oh, here's a here's a cool ruling for you guys. So, proto form is when your Digimon would be deleted. So, I think correct me if I'm wrong, Bryce, but you can order your effects so you can protect yourself with Greymon X and then use proto form to return the Greymon X back to your hand. Uh, I have. I th there is a way. I th I'm not. I don't quite remember if that's the case. I think it has to be a Greymon X that's not the one that requires the option. Hmm. We'll look into it. Like you guys, you guys in the cot in the chat in the comments. Let me know if I'm wrong or if I'm right. But I'm pretty sure you can order your effects that way. Uh. All right. We'll move on to Magnamon Armors. So this did get a big 
a new card, the Magnamon from the Double Typhoon Star deck that's randomly in there. Um, I think this deck is very playable. It's very solid. I was trying earlier. It doesn't feel like it's doing anything unfair, but it, then I'm just winning for some reason. Like mm -hmm. It's like good enough, and it's annoying to remove bodies. And the new Magnamon is a very good card, so it just gives you even more security bombs when the deck could already afford to play a lot. Yeah. It's just mis it missing something that makes it just way over the top, which it's getting pretty soon. But like, yeah. But for now, it's current, still solid. yeah, BT fifteen Magnamon armors, solid tier two deck, very playable. Uh, we'll move on. Also, to... can play Ukumon. Ukumon's a good card. You can't play Ukumon. BL Starmon. BL Starmon. Uh, You've been testing this deck a lot. Uh, I'm so unsure if this deck is cope or actually solid. Like sometimes it feels really good. Sometimes it feels like straight dog shit. Especially after the Gabumon nerfs, like you have to really like ghetto rig your engine, and sometimes it just doesn't get you there. But sometimes you do get there, and it feels good. And this deck does have access to good bounce with Kakaitis Breath and uh, Metal Storm. So. Overall, this deck averages out to like a low tier two, in my opinion. Uh, if you're a BL Star player, then you already know the pain. <laughs> BL Star has not been that good yeah. for a long time. It's, it's a deck that can just brick too much, but when it works, it feels really, really strong. Yeah. Um, I, I very few Psychmon outs now. I think it's, yeah. it's hard to play um, Death Claw now. So. Yeah, it's hard to get rid of Psychmon, but also less people are playing Psychmon, except for I think. Newman's kind of playing it. Yeah. Which is bad for you if you see that deck. Yes, sir. All right, move, we'll move on to the Dank Masters. So this is the Apocalymon engine, but instead of your four Apocalymons, you now just play a bunch of Omnimons. And this deck, it if they start rolling you, they roll you hard. Like some the Omnimons are really strong. So the problem is that it's a this is a Mega Z deck essentially, so they're going to give you a shitload of memory return. So if you can fight back with the memory they give you, then you're probably going to win. If you can't, the Omni Monster is going to steamroll you. Yeah, it gets to play like level 7 after level 7 after level 7, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And the way it, it kind of accesses this engine is that the Dark Master's intended support is like you slam like a 6 cost level 5 that plays a level 6 for free in like your raising area, and then you start setting up that way. Mm-hmm. It's a very unique deck. If you like old school Mega Zoo, this is like now we actually have an old school Mega Zoo type deck again. Yes, kind of cool. Yep. But it does give you a ton of memory, and there are outs to a lot of the stuff they're doing. Mm -hmm. But it's a fun deck. So if you built a Pokemon to be that guy for two weeks, you can switch to Omnimon. Yeah, <laughs> Dank Master. That said, the way. I the way that a Pokemon was overpowered was not the intended way to play Dark Masters. They just jammed all the purple cards to get Dark Masters as fast as possible and then uh, uninteractively won the game by milling you. That's true. That's and true. Th we don't want to see that ever. That's probably... We dodged the most toxic format the game's ever had and I'm very glad for it. Yeah, me too. I just didn't go to locals for those two weeks. Hey, <laughs> get wrecked, nerds. Uh, Mastermon Price... Got some new uh, this deck is tier 3. It feels tier 1 when you drop Hadamon and have your combo pieces, but this deck is just too bricky. It's mm. it, it's too bricky and doesn't end the game. Mm. If it ended, if it had the ability to end the game or it was just less bricky at getting its like condition set up, mm -hmm. it would be a much better deck, but both those things are always true for this deck. Every time it gets new support, that none of those issues are fixed. It's still too bricky and it's still, still too slow. Like, yeah. even with Patamon, which is, like, a crazy, like, acceleration engine, it still doesn't end the game, which means it's still too slow. Okay, fair enough. I believe that. Mastermon, and they play by effects. It, and it plays by effects. It does do, like, some of the craziest board wipes possible. Uh, because the thing is, their play by effects don't really matter for the Leviamon stuff, unless it's the Biting Crush specifically, mm. because they can remove with their when they play by effects, like, at the same time. That's true. But it's still, like, it just takes too much, like, work to get the deck to work. I love this deck. It's one of my favorite decks of all time. But it's just too, it's too bricky. It it was okay to be that, like, slow and bricky, like, a year ago. Maybe. Like, not even a year ago, two years ago. Like, a year ago, it was still Greymon format. So, it was yeah. bad then. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really improve that much since then, except for exactly Patamon. Yeah. All right. We'll move on to Gotcha Green. Gotcha Green. 
has graduated from the clown college and is now a real deck. I'm a believer in this deck. I'm a believer. It got Why is so, it a real deck now. It got some good support with Double Typhoon because now, so you play the bunny bottom end. You play bunnies as your bottom end, so you, you get the new terrier, the new Lotmon giving alliance, and then uh, I don't know some other bunny. And then you go the, your Tortamon level four, Rapidmon level four. You play your Gotcha level five, so Jagamon and Mama Tyramon, or you can even put in like a cheeky new ST Rapidmon in there too. And then you got Heavy Leo, Quantumon, Mega Gargumon, Ace as your top end. And those are all three of those cards are houses, especially when you did evolve into them for free. So uh, a lot of the problems with Gacha was that you could whiff your Gacha, but now with uh, the Tortomon and the Coromon Egg, the Green Coromon, Jagamon, Izzy and Mimi, like you can almost guarantee you're going to hit something off your Gacha effect. And your payoff for your level 6 is actually good because Heavy Leo will let you remove a body and swing twice. Mega Gargo stuns two things and swings twice. Quantumon removes something and then you can look at their security and control board from there. Uh, and then you got Alliance with the Lotmon so you can actually do more damage. This deck is good. This de it's it's a good tier 2 deck. Yeah, it got. I think it, uh, the gotcha decks, it, obviously it's like, it's like kind of for fun, but the top end it got now with like the top end that green has is just there's a much more payoff for just going for random good level sixes than it had before like yeah all the other ones need like very specific support now these are just like standalone great cards mm -hmm. and the new uh uh the bunny engine one of the terrier mons that you play your tamers for cheaper yes but since you get your accelerate your like gotcha green like tamer which normally it was like it costs you a lot of memory to play and it mm -hmm. costs you a lot less when you get to Accelerate it out with your uh, with your um, Terrier Mon. Yes, and Izzy and Mimi has really good synergy with Mega Gargo because since you stun two things and prevent them from unsuspending, it guarantees that you get the memory back on your turn. So it's actually it's a cool deck with some like sick synergies. I like this deck. It's a fun deck. So if you're looking for a fun green deck, uh, I I highly recommend Gotcha. But uh, we'll move on to a less fun green deck. So, a more coke green deck. So sad right now. Unfortunately, Herc, my boy Herc Kawu is in the. He's in Clown College right now. He's he's studying. He's studying hard for BT sixteen when he gets to graduate. He's gonna be a, from a clown <laughs> to a tyrant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this deck has no win condition right now. Yeah, I think <laughs> what what Ray always says kills me. He's like my Hercules Kabuteri Mon swings for twelve k one check. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's what the deck does. Herc Kawu swings for twelve k one check. <laughs> Wow, such a good deck. Like it doesn't this deck does nothing. <laughs> it does nothing right now. Uh, yeah. Tyrants are crazy card, so we're we're excited to see that for, for green players yeah. everywhere. Yeah, BT sixteen waiting room for sure for bugs. Uh other than that, that's the tier list for BT fifteen, ST seventeen. Uh, yeah, play. There's a lot of really good tier two decks, and BT16 doesn't drop until May, I think. Like, this, yeah, it's a pretty long format we this, got. This is a long format, so lucky. There's a lot of like good, solid yeah. decks that you can take to locals if you're getting bored of playing the tier one. And these decks can all fight against tier one too, so it's not like this yeah. is like a complete blowout format. Like, yeah, I would say that this format is very well rounded and balanced it's just tier one is kind of clearly above the other decks mm -hmm. but not in the way that's like oh it's oppressively above them it's just these are definitely better than the other decks yes sir so yeah there it is uh any closing thoughts bryce uh good thing they released a very quality ban list before this uh before this uh True. set 15 because then we would have had a toxic format now we have a pretty good format that's true that's crazy what hitting like one card Really did. It hit, well, they hit like three cards. Uh, I guess that, they could have. They could. They could have kept Garurum on for a little bit. I mean, uh, that card is. I don't know. Us. The top five decks yeah, were uh, a little Apostle decks, Anubis decks, and Garurum on decks. Okay, Anubis and Anubis and a Pokemon could have gone to limited, but Garurum on my, my boy Garurum on. They shot the dog too early, man. They could have given him no format to breathe. Maybe but that card's really good. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. We'll leave it at that. Uh, BT15 tier list, there it is, and GG's.